welcome to our show, Around Thurston County. I'm your host, Patrick Babineau. Around Thurston County is an in-depth look at local and regional issues that impact our lives. It's about the people, places, and issues that make Thurston County a special and interesting place in which to live and work. Today, we are in Olympia at the headquarters of the Washington State Department of Transportation, or what is called WashDOT. We will be talking with Paula Hammond, Secretary of WashDOT, about local and regional transportation issues that will impact our region and the state. Paula Hammond was appointed Secretary of the Washington State Department of Transportation in August 2007 by Governor Christine Gregoire. Hammond manages an agency of 6,800 employees with responsibility of 18,600 uh, lane miles of highway, 3,600 bridges, general aviation airports, passenger and freight rail programs, and the Washington State Ferry System, which is the largest in the United States. WashDOT is nearly completing uh, the state's largest capital program in the agency's 104-year history, uh, which began in 2003 and amounts to over $16.3 billion. Hammond has committed her efforts to transparent project delivery, development of sustainable investment strategies for long-term safety, preservation, and maintenance of our state's large transportation infrastructure system. Her key initiative is the development of Moving Washington, the state's program to fight congestion and reduce emissions. In her 33 years with WashDOT, Hammond has worked in all areas of the department's capital delivery, operation, and policy programs. She has graduated from Oregon State University with a Bachelor of Science degree in civil engineering and is a professional engineer. Paula has been on many national and regional boards and associations. One of the key ones is the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. She chaired its Standing Committee on Highways, its leadership on high-speed and intercity passenger rail. She was also its chair on Sustainable Transportation Steering Committee and the vice chair of the uh, Standing Committee on Performance Management. And she was its past president in 2009. She's also the chair of, of the States for Passenger Rail Coalition and a member of the Transportation Research Board Executive Committee. She's also been a member of the Washington Transportation Improvement Board since 1995, and also a member of the American Public Works Association, and actually in this year, 2012, was a national top 10 public works leader. She's also been a Washington State Roy Morse Award winner in 2011, and the Women's Transportation Seminar Woman of the Year in 2011 and was inducted into Oregon State University's Engineering Academy of Distinguished Engineers in the year 2008. Wow, that's impressive. Thank you, that makes me tired just listening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, allowing us to come here at your uh, wonderful facilities in downtown Olympia You're to welcome. talk about transportation. We really appreciate your uh, presence to share with our audience a little bit about what's happening in transportation now here in Washington. Great, thanks for your interest, Patrick. I think it's an important topic and a very timely one. Mm -hmm. On many levels, exactly. Yes. So let's get right to the questions. In recent years, uh, the washed-out uh, the Washington State Department of Transportation is overseeing massive capital improvement mm -hmm. projects. Uh, the Seattle Waterfront, the new uh, 520 bridge, the uh, I-90 uh, over the pass. Could you tell us how these projects are coming along and how are they going to revitalize the state's economy? Well, you've mentioned the $16.3 billion worth of investments that we're able to make with the recent gas tax increases, which was in 03 and 05. Right. We're very fortunate to have been able to make major investments in critical economic corridors like the Seattle Waterfront, mm -hmm. uh, Snoqualmie Pass, right. trying to keep that pass open year-round, free from avalanches and mm -hmm. expanding its use, North Spokane Freeway in Spokane. Mm -hmm. We're working on Interstate 405, finally Pierce County HOVs. I always say finally. It seems like it <laughs> took a long time to get there. Yeah. Uh, and we've built uh, three new ferry boats for mm -hmm. the Washington State Ferry System and have two more under construction. Wow. Very important. Every one of these, as I mentioned, economic 
economic corridors. Mm -hmm. Important as our state's recovering from this economy that we're in, mm -hmm. that the freight movement, the freight and goods, and the strength of the economy of our state really depends on a lot of our global trade. Right. And as we smooth out and clear these roadways that are so important to freight movement, uh, we also get the benefit to commuters and mm -hmm. travelers and, and tourists, but keeping our freight and goods moving for the state and national economy. That's right. I know that Governor Gregoire has been pushing a new initiative called Moving Washington. It's a strategy to help uh, find ways to fund our transportation-related infrastructure projects and to uh, keep our system essentially up to date. Uh, there have been a lot of stakeholders involved in this process, and if I'm not mistaken, also a citizen survey to ask Washingtonians, would you be interested, for example, in revenue enhancement and, uh, for projects that you see are important for your area, for example? And uh, it was interesting, the results of that survey. Can you tell us a little bit more about this whole Moving Washington strategy? Well, the Connecting, uh, the connecting Washington and Moving Washington strategies go hand in hand. The governor mm -hmm. called together a, uh, a group of business, labor, mm -hmm. growers, shippers, mm -hmm. uh, community leaders right. around the table in the fall. And collectively, they talked about what does our state need in mm -hmm. the next 10 years for transportation investments, recognized a huge need, right. $50 billion or something, wow. but said, look, let's bite off a 10-year, something like $21 billion investment. Mm -hmm. But what I appreciated was their recognition that uh, first, you take care of the assets that you own. Right. Ferry boats, mm -hmm. state highways, local roadways, mm -hmm. state and local bridges. You must take care of the assets you have or you'll lose them. Right. And then they said, now let's think about the most strategic investments that we can have uh, for the state and for the uh, the region and mm -hmm. the economy and the health of our recovery in mm -hmm. this economic downturn. Uh, so the citizen survey uh, mm -hmm. came back and, and citizens mostly understood that it was important to invest in taking care of your roads and bridges and your pavements. Right. They appreciated asset management much like they do their own homes. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also didn't necessarily understand that the crisis uh, that we feel in, in our investments is upon us yet. Mm -hmm. They supported more investments in transportation uh, in things like tolling to right. build a major corridor, which was interesting because that's kind of what we're doing up right. in Puget Sound. Uh, and they supported the notion of a user fee, which is interesting because gas tax kind of is a user fee, mm -hmm. but as electric vehicles and other kinds of vehicles come into play that aren't using as much gas, That's right. we find our revenues falling. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, Washington also has the nation's largest ferry service and uh, system, and it's really iconic. I mean, uh, even for people that aren't regular commuters on it, most of us have been on it and will be on it in the future. I know that there's been some issue uh, recently about how to make that ferry system uh, keep it for the long term mm -hmm. and make it sustainable. Could you share more with us about that? Well, the, the challenges that the ferry system has is that in 2000, when the motor vehicle excise tax uh, was removed from transportation, remember we all used to pay right. an excise tax when we registered our vehicle. And That's it could right. have been three, four, or five hundred dollars. It was a mm -hmm. huge amount. Citizens voted it down. Supreme Court said it was unconstitutional, right. legislature decided, no, let's undo this tax right. uh, or fee, whatever it is. Um, so, so when that money was removed, the ferry system it, itself lost $900 million over wow. the last 10 years. And that was money, it was mm. used to sustain and support mm -hmm. the ferry system operations the boat maintenance and terminal preservation as well. Wow. So that money was gone. What we're doing instead is now sharing all of the gas tax that we get in the state mm -hmm. between highways and ferries, which means we've moved $900 million from what would have been the highway system or the roadway and bridge system into the ferry system to sustain them both. And we're losing ground, quite frankly. Right, because you have less revenue to do more. That's right. Wow. We have, uh, the recession has caused folks not to drive as much. Mm -hmm. Gas tax is a flat tax, right. pennies per gallon, so it doesn't mm -hmm. increase as inflation adds on over the years. Right. Uh, and electric vehicles, hybrids, while they're great for the economy, or for the environment, excuse me, they're not so good for the revenue stream because now people are driving twice as far on a gallon of gas 
than they used to. Mm. So our revenues over time have uh, really remained flat and declining, even though there's a lot more people driving around. Hmm. And it kind of goes back a little bit to, again, that citizen survey to ask Washingtonians, uh, uh, are you uh, uh, interested in maybe finding some revenue enhancement uh, process in the near future that can help projects that, that you're aware of that you need in your area, uh, that kind of s sense of consciousness building and also to find a consensus for how do we get out of this whole right. if we have decreasing revenues and yet, as you're saying, expanding infrastructure needs. Mm -hmm. Well, for us um, that are, have been studying this for quite a few years and those of us that worry about the future and the mm -hmm. health of the system, mm -hmm. uh, we recognize that gas taxes really aren't the be all end all. They right. aren't the sustainable revenue source just to take care of the assets that mm -hmm. we have. The legislature in this legislative session directed us to do more work on a different kind of source of revenue in the future to get off of our dependence on gas tax. Mm -hmm. So we're looking more uh, with some other states who are piloting the mileage based user fee notion. Mm -hmm. In other words, like a utility, right. transportation is a utility. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you start thinking about paying for what you use mm -hmm. and the value of your trip. Mm -hmm. Sort of like a toll, but more mileage based. And it's really in its infancy and right. it's probably 10 to 15 or so years away. Mm -hmm. But it's something that all of us that are looking forward are trying mm -hmm. to think about how best to capture uh, the revenue that's necessary to sustain the system. That's right. And, uh, and part of that system, for example, and part of uh, one of the ways that WashDOT tries to maximize on, in, in its uh, uh, limited system is the use of HOV lanes. Right. And uh, I know that you're expanding those on I-5 into Pierce County. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit to the audience how, because some people have a misunderstanding of the use of HOV lanes, how that actually helps increase mobility. And also, could you um, let us know if there are any plans for uh, HOV lanes to be extended into the um, South Sound area into Thurston County? Well, the benefit of HOV lanes in congested areas is that they provide what would be a reliable trip. Folks really need to know, how long will it take me on a daily basis if I'm going from, say, DuPont or right. Thurston County up to Seattle? Right. And if you know that you can get in the HOV lane and you know it moves faster and you have a buddy or right. several buddies or a van pool or a bus you can take, mm -hmm. that's a pretty consistent, reliable trip. Mm -hmm. And that's what folks are looking for. So the HOV lanes help us move more people right. uh, than their, their general purpose uh, lanes on the other side. And as people are able to move in, use transit, van pool, carpool, some mm -hmm. way to use the HOV lanes, that opens up the lanes for freight movement and freight and goods. So it's almost a benefit for everyone. Mm -hmm. But what we're finding now in some of the central Puget Sound HOV lanes is that they are so congested with the people who are in two plus cars yes. uh, that we're starting to think about and we're, we've got a pilot project now where we're able to do the hot lane high occupancy toll lane where a single occupant, if, if there's an opening, can buy their way in. Mm -hmm. That helps with them having a reliable trip. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to talk about how to keep those lanes operational and moving in the future. Thurston County, I think, is a ways away. Right, right now, our most southern Pierce County lanes will be right at SR 16, right as uh, you come off the Narrows Bridge, as right. HOV lanes yes. leading up to, to King County. Right. Uh, but someday, and we've got it on the long range drawing board, but as mm -hmm. I said, the revenue situation will keep us from really maximizing those kinds of investments. And you now. mentioned hot lanes. Uh, uh -huh. Isn't there a hot lane on uh, 167? Th that's where our pilot right. is, SR right. 167. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a hot lane pilot, and we're also starting the planning phases of uh, the hot lane system. We're now calling it the express toll lane system, mm -hmm. a two lane by your way in on Interstate 405 all the way from Northgate down mm -hmm. to where 405 touches 167. Oh. So we're in the planning stages mm -hmm. for that as well. Mm -hmm. And how is that working on 167? It's uh, for a while. It took. Uh, it, it's been interesting. We've monitored it every year. We mm -hmm. had trouble getting up to the point where we were making as much as we spent uh, mm -hmm. on the investment. Mm -hmm. We've now broken even and are actually making money each month. Oh, great! And but it's interesting when you talk to the people who use it. First, they were called the Lexus lanes. Mm -hmm. uh, folks right. imagine yes. that only rich people would buy their. 
and our survey showed it was more like a Ford lane. Oh, really? Uh, so that Ford wow. vehicles were actually the predominant vehicles. Mm -hmm. And we learned from people we surveyed that they said it was worth it to me to pay that dollar right. uh, to buy my way into that 10 miles mm -hmm. to get to my daughter's ballet lesson mm -hmm. or my son's soccer game. That's right. Or the plumber who needs to get to the next job and right. didn't mind paying a dollar to get an advancement mm -hmm. and a benefit in time. Mm -hmm. And this is a market-driven based Mm -hmm. test, mm -hmm. and it's showing that people actually will buy that kind of a trip mm -hmm. if they have the opportunity. Because mm -hmm. really, time is money for a lot That's of right. folks. That's right. Wow. Um, a number of years back, Boeing uh, moved their headquarters, unfortunately, from here to Chicago, mm -hmm. and they cited their reason for doing that, and there may have been a number of other reasons as well, but they cited one of the key ones is the increased and in difficult traffic congestion, in, especially in the central Puget Sound, mm -hmm. as well as western Washington in general, but primarily around greater Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, what's been done since that time to alleviate this problem um, in the central Puget Sound area? Well, I think that's a big recognition of the problems that our Connecting Washington Task Force in the fall also saw. Mm -hmm. Even though of the $16.3 billion investment from 03 and 05, mm -hmm. and even though $10 billion of that is being invested right in central Puget Sound, mm -hmm. uh, there's still more to do. Wow. So I mentioned the work we're doing on 405 and the Alaskan Way Viaduct Tunnel and 520. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still the 509 connection at the airport, SeaTac right. that That's never right. got finished. The mm -hmm. 167 connection to the port of Tacoma. Mm -hmm. There's Joint Base Lewis McCord right. I-5 that has all of a sudden, really yeah. seemingly overnight, right. turned into a huge bottleneck. <laughs> but that's been growing with background right. traffic. Right. And think about Thurston County. Mm -hmm. Think about every interchange we have that doesn't quite work right because mm -hmm. we've grown so much over right. the years. So fast. So the businesses were loud and clear with the governor and with the legislature in the fall. Mm -hmm. They said economic corridors, and those were not just by where we move our freight and goods to the ports or mm -hmm. in and out of the Puget Sound, mm -hmm. but those areas where uh, we have high commerce, mm -hmm. the Microsoft and the Boeings and the big companies, mm -hmm. Joint Base Lewis McCord is right. a huge employer. That's right. uh, think about Thurston County's employment and mm -hmm. the, how much we move around. And what they said was, this is choking our ability to grow and to grow the state's economy. Mm -hmm. And they're asking for the legislature and the governor and, and all of the citizens to think about investing more in transportation so that that doesn't become the thing that stymies economic growth in the state. Right, because it's really a catch-22. If we don't spend, the, we don't want to spend the money, but if we don't spend it on transportation, we could very well lose some of these key industries we that sure we can. really need for our economic right. development. And I'm, I'm the cheerleader that always says, mm -hmm. don't forget that if we don't preserve the mm -hmm. system we have, right. we'll lose that too. That's right. So we have to take care of the assets that we own, and then we need to think about making the ones we have work better Mm -hmm. operate more efficiently? Mm -hmm. How do we use demand management like we're doing with the hot lanes where mm -hmm. people can buy their way in and you do some things to creatively manage the traffic in the congested mm -hmm. areas and then make your expansions that you know you need to make. So WashDOT's really trying to be creative in this new time oh, to find out what the new, new, world. Right, the new normal is. I described to people that when I was in college 30 some years ago that we the engineering curriculum really encouraged you to build some things and then mm -hmm. you you stand back and admire it. Mm. Uh, nowadays, <laughs> we build things, right. we operate things, we mm -hmm. try and maximize the efficiency of what we've built mm -hmm. to make sure the money goes further and further and further. Mm -hmm. And that's really a great challenge for us mm -hmm. uh, here at WashDOT right. and throughout the region. Mm -hmm. But it's also a necessity because we cannot continue to try and build, mm -hmm. uh, expand the system and, and mm -hmm. pave more roads and, and do all of the things we would love to do. There's mm -hmm. just not enough money, mm -hmm. and we can't afford to take care of the assets that we have today. And we're the sixth fastest growing state in the union, and from what we were, uh, from all the demographic projections, after this recession is over, we expect to have at least a million and a half new residents in the central Puget Sound yes. area alone, and 150,000 in Thurston County alone. So how we manage transportation in the future is going to be very important. That's isn't right. It? That's right. And mm -hmm. we have a lot of benefits right now. We've had a 20 year commute trip reduction program in our state where mm -hmm. the state and businesses are partnering to mm -hmm. help figure out how to move and get 
uh, their workers to work, mm -hmm. help commuters find a seamless or reliable trip to work. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have the nation's largest van pool program in wow. the country. Really? Yes, wow. and it's in partnership with the local transit agencies mm -hmm. and the state, and we've got a huge investment mm -hmm. in providing uh, and encouraging van pooling in our mm -hmm. state. So we've got a lot of good things going for right. us. Right, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. And I know that even on the local level, uh, a lot of uh, local governments are trying to minimize mm -hmm. the impact on congestion. They're, they're staggering their work to, uh, uh, hours for their employees. They're encouraging telework. They're doing other creative, innovative uh, things. I know that when we spoke with uh, 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 Kathy Wolf, uh, who is the chair of the Board of Commissioners of Thurston mm -hmm. County, she was talking to us about what different things Thurston County is trying to do now. Uh, does Washout have any programs like that? We do. Uh, a few years ago, we looked at how many of our employees have staggered work hours mm -hmm. and do, do different kinds of things to help with their ability to carpool and, and ride share. Mm -hmm. About 39%, I think it was in 2010, of our employees across the state have staggered work hours. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we've started, and we've just finished our first phase, is a telework pilot mm -hmm. program. Uh, which is wildly successful, and mm -hmm. and some of us old school people worry a little bit about oh if somebody's staying home will they get their work done? But mm -hmm. we've set up a really good accountability and productivity mm -hmm. reporting system, and we also are uh, trying out that not every employee uh, is a good fit for telework, but mm -hmm. for those who can, mm -hmm. uh, really can get a lot of good productivity, happy workers, mm -hmm. which these days are hard to come by, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a good way for the agency to sort of keep ahead, because teleworking means you're not on the road, right. you're not burning fossil fuels, That's true. and uh, you're contributing, maybe you have a better home life balance because of it. Oh, wonderful. Um, what are some of the major projects you see WashDA engaged in in the next few years here in the Thurston County region? Well, I think one of the most impactful projects is the work that we're starting to do, as I mentioned, on I-5 at Joint Base Lewis-McChord, yes. because even though it's in Pierce County, right. it surely affects those of us in That's Thurston right. County who go north uh, several times a week, right. and uh, some people go every day. So right. we're doing some work where we got a federal grant to start some of what I described as the demand management and operations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. work. We're going to have more uh, uh, variable message signs and uh, communications for travelers. Mm -hmm. We're working on uh, using our shoulders during peak periods near some of those congested interchanges. So wow. we're going to do some active traffic management, it's mm -hmm. called. And then we start working on the environmental documentation to uh, expand that system and revise those interchanges that are just largely out of date for right. the kind of traffic that they have. Mm -hmm. Closer here, oh, and then as you work your way down, uh, the Nisqually River bridges in 2014 right. have to be painted. That's how we protect the health of the steel on that bridge. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a big deal because of the environmental regulations that require you to wrap your work now. Wow. It's going to constrain those very narrow lanes, right. uh, and we'll be doing work that's going to have a big impact on commuters uh, in 2014. 2014, starting 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also doing work on 510 out by the tribe, Nisqually yes. tribe and Yelm Highway. Some mm -hmm. more roundabouts coming your way, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is just great to watch how traffic has responded to right. this new way of keeping uh, traffic well. safe yeah. in the intersections. That's right. Uh, and we have work out on 101 between the Little Creek Casino and, and SR8. We're going to do a lot of paving, mm -hmm. seismic retrofitting of some bridges, mm -hmm. but sadly, not much expansion and mm -hmm. I know there's some problem areas around the freeway system in mm -hmm. uh, Thurston County mm -hmm. uh, revenues aren't there for us to be able to so we need more revenues that. ultimately in unfortunately the yeah that's right um, could you tell us briefly uh, we received the state received a large federal grant to help fund um, its passenger uh, train service and make it more reliable could you tell us a little bit about that we were very fortunate under the American Recovery Act uh, program when President Obama set forth his vision for high-speed mm -hmm. rail right. in uh, the country. That's right. And our Amtrak Cascades from Eugene, Oregon to Vancouver, BC was recognized as one of the regional high-speed rail programs mm -hmm. worth investing in. Mm -hmm. And we in Washington got $800 million to mm -hmm. help strengthen and expand the Burlington Northern Santa Fe and Tacoma rail lines that Wonderful. we have 
all based on the need to increase our reliability of trips. Right. When we have a lot of slides, we have slowdowns That's because right. of freight mm -hmm. and passenger conflicts. Mm -hmm. So increase the reliability, increase the speeds of our round trips, and add two more round trips between Seattle and Portland, Oregon. So right now we have four round trips a day. Mm -hmm. We'll have that we'll have six round trips a day in a few years, mm -hmm. and we'll maintain the two round trips between Seattle and Vancouver in the north with speeds and reliability that customers can count on. So a great boon for us and our passenger rail program. Great. Yeah. So what do you envision our transportation to look like in the next 20 years? I know that's a huge question to ask, and we only have a few moments, but what, what do you envision? Well, for us, I think we're on the path, which mm -hmm. is why I said it's really an exciting time for mm -hmm. engineers like myself mm -hmm. and our agency. We're transforming this, the system, the transportation mm -hmm. system, away from just adding infrastructure. Right. Uh, into a more integrated transportation system that I think will become the 21st century model. Mm -hmm. uh, transit, carpools, van pools, mm -hmm. passenger rail, all of those options are going to be very viable for people. Mm -hmm. And we on the highway side will look to be providing reliable trips for those forms of transportation, but also to operate the system as efficiently as possible. So we're much more hands-on in our transportation systems today, mm -hmm. much more looking for efficiencies and accountability abilities uh, in how that system works mm -hmm. and I think people will be paying differently uh, mm -hmm. for their use of the transportation system in the years to come. Thank you. We always ask our guests at the end of each show, what are one or two of the things you like most about living here in Thurston County? Well, Thurston County's been my home now for 33 years, the longest I've ever lived anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and my husband and I have three children, and I think mm -hmm. it's the quality of life that we right. have in this community That's that we right. value the most. Mm -hmm. The sense of community, uh, mm -hmm. Lacey and Olympia and Tumwater together are working in such great synergy that I think mm -hmm. it's really a testament to how this is going to be a great county to work uh, to work and live in in mm -hmm. the future. And, we really do love it here. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, thank you. Thank you for coming and sharing this. There's so much that's going on in transportation, and that's it's such right. an important issue. Um, Washington State Department of Transportation will be an important cabinet post for the next governor, and what the agency does in the future will have a large impact on how the state moves its people and how it does its business. So it's important that we have an idea what the agency plans to do in the near future. We were fortunate today to have with us Paula Hammond, Secretary of WashDOT, to help outline some of the agency's priorities, and we appreciate the good work she has done. We hope you've enjoyed our show today around Thurston County. There's so much that's going on here in the county and so much about our county that makes it interesting. Please plan to look for our future shows and tell your friends about us. You can also find us on our Around Thurston County Facebook page and our YouTube channel. I'm Patrick Babineau for Around Thurston County. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.